with that in mind, I always, always start my sessions sharing our mission at Flipgrid. So our mission is to help you empower every learner on the planet to share their voice and respect the diverse voices of others. So Flipgrid is going to be the platform. It's going to be the tool. Because remember, Flipgrid is the tool. You do the magic. Every single one of, the, of you, you do the magic in the classroom. Flipgrid is only going to be the tool that you are going to use with your students in your classroom to facilitate the learning so that students feel comfortable sharing their voices, but most importantly, respecting the diverse voices of others. So if you've never heard of Flipgrid, Flipgrid is social learning. It's a simple, free video discussion to make learning fun, fulfilling, and very, very, very empowering, my friends. What you see on the screen, this right here, I took screenshots of the app. Flipgrid works web-based. So if you have a computer, you have access to the net and a webcam, it works. If you have a Chromebook, it works too. If you have an iPhone or an Android phone, it works too. If you have a tablet, it works. So in other words, it works on any device. If you're using a tablet or a phone, then you will need to download the app. If you're using a computer or a Chromebook, all you gotta do is open your browser and then go to our website. So from both devices, you can most definitely work. We as teachers create an account. We can create an account. So if you are a Google district, using your Google credentials, you can create a Flipgrid account. If you are a Microsoft district, using your Microsoft credentials, your, your uh, email, your username and password, you can create a Flipgrid account. Only us as teachers are the ones who create these accounts. Our students do not have to create accounts. They will be invited to our Flipgrid group, to our Flipgrid class by a code. It can be, I can share it. Once I, the teacher, create this group, I share the code and my students are welcome into my classroom. So first of all, it is free. It is awesome. Right here, the only difference between the app and the website is these lenses. We call them lenses. They look like filters, just like on social media. So the students can be very creative and us as teachers too, when we are creating our videos. So that is the only difference between the website, working on web and working on the app. I can create a group on the website. I can create a group from the app. I can create a topic from the website. I can create a topic from the app. So. I have my account. What is it that I need to do now? So I go to www.flipgrid.com and I'm going to find this website right here. If I don't have an account, then I'm going to click on sign up and either you use your Google email, the one that you use for your Google Classroom, or your Microsoft email, the one that you use for Microsoft Teams. You type your email. You type your password in bingo. You already created an account with Flipgrid. Así de simple. It's that simple for us as teachers. So once we create our account, then we log in. And in a minute, I'm going to jump into the platform so that you see all of this in action. Now, our students, our students, when we share our group with them, then if they're working from a computer or a Chromebook, then they will need to use the website, right? They will open their uh, Chrome browser or, or Safari if they're using a Mac or Microsoft Edge, right? If they're using the uh, Microsoft uh, browser and they're gonna go to flipgrid.com, right? www.flipgrid.com and our students, they will be clicking here where it says enter a joint code and they will be typing the code that we as teachers are going to share with them. But we, the both of us, teachers and students come to the same website, but we take different routes. We don't have an account. We as teachers don't have an account. We sign up, we create one, and then we log in. When we create the classroom for our students, 
just like we do it in Google Classroom and Microsoft Teams that both platforms generate a code, same thing with Flipgrid. Flipgrid will generate a code that we are going to share with our students and they're going to type it right here and then hit enter and they will be allowed to join our class. If they're joining from their uh, apps, from the, from the Flipgrid app from their phones, then they can scan a QR code. A QR code will be the code to enter my Flipgrid classroom. So depending on what your students want to use for your Flipgrid class. So I'm ready, Feli. I already created an account. So what is the first thing I need to do? Well, then we need to create a group, right? We as teachers need to create this space for our students, right? So think of your group as your classroom, your community, your learning community. You can invite people you want to have video discussions with. You are in total control of it. You decide how your students enter your classroom. You decide who enters your Google, I'm sorry, your, uh, your group, your Flipgrid group. You decide everything. You have 100% control of this. And digital citizenship is something very, very important for us at Microsoft and Flipgrid. So all of Flipgrid is designed around digital citizenship and the safety of our students and our teachers as well. Yes, Flipgrid looks very similar to social media, to those social media apps, right? But it is a safe space for us as teachers and for our students as well. I love social media, I do, but digital citizenship, we don't want to have our students in social media or, or again, digital citizenship, we don't want to bring social media into our classrooms, especially if we are working with minors. So it's all about the safety of our students. And Flipgrid allows you to have the safety space for your kids and not to worry about all those sometimes crazy things that happen on social media. Yes. So I'm going to create my group. Once I create my group, what do I need to do? Then my students are going to enter my group. Chum, 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 van a entrar. What are they going to find inside this group? Inside this group, they're going to find topics. These topics are going to be the conversations that we are going to have with our students. These topics can be a question, it can be an idea, it can be an experiment, a debate, exploration, anything you want anything you decide, anything you're teaching, you want to make it into a flippery topic, go for it. Your community responds with fun, short videos. You decide how long the videos are or how short the videos are. So once again, you as the leader of the group, as the owner of the group, you decide everything that happens within your group and within your topics. And that's how the magic happened, my friends. So your community engages in video discussions. If you want to, once again, you have 100% control of your class. If you want to, they can view each other videos. They can leave comments. They can leave feedback. They can watch the videos together. It is your group. It is your community. You decide what to do. And I'm about to jump into the platform so that you see all of this in action. Remember that if you can think it, you can flip grid it. I will be sharing this presentation with, uh, with you all so that you have, you see all of these ideas on how we can be using Flipgrid in the classroom from the pre-K to eighth, all the way to the uses of Flipgrid with my family, with, with my staff, with my PLC, and so on and so forth. So your voice, whenever, whatever. So here we go. What I'm going to do, I'm going to minimize my screen. I am going to open Microsoft Edge, right? And remember, it can be from whatever browser you decide. In my case, I love to use Microsoft Edge. And where did it go? Aquí viene, aquí viene. Aquí está. Here we go. And 
I'm going to go to Flipgrid. That's simple. Flipgrid.com. There it is. So that is the website. That's our website. And once you are here, remember, if you don't have an account, then I am going to be clicking on sign up. So we are going to pretend that every single one of you already created an account, right? So I, what I'm going to do now that I have an account, I am going to click on login. And it'll take you to your Flipgrid main page. This is your main page in your Flipgrid account. This is where you're going to find your groups. And this is where you're going to find your topics, right? If, it's, if this is the first time that you use Flipgrid, then you're going to have zero groups and zero topics. But you can create as many groups as you want to and as many topics as you want to. There is no limit, no limit whatsoever. So my main, my main dashboard, I'm going to find my groups. I'm going to find my topics. Then right here on the top right hand side, I'm also going to find the Flipgrid camera. This is the camera for me as a teacher. What can I do? What can I, what can the camera offer me? It offers me all of the Flipgrid camera tools and all I can create as many videos as I want to. If I want to create a video tutorial about uh, parts of speech, then I can use the Flipgrid camera to create that Flipgrid, uh, that tutorial, that uh, parts of speech tutorial. So let me go ahead and I am going to stop the video right here on Zoom so that I can show you how the Flipgrid camera works. So I'm gonna click right here and the Flipgrid camera is loading. Come on, come on. There it is. So now I, the teacher, I'm inside the Flipgrid camera. So I can, what I can do, I can create a video welcoming my students for, sem for next semester, right? Or maybe I'm working summer school and I want to create a welcome video for my summer class. Or I'm going to have a book club meeting, right? And I want to create a video where I am uh, introducing the book that we're going to read together. I can create as many videos as I want to. This is the Flipgrid camera for us as teachers. So right under the camera, I have these options. Uh, what these options are going to allow me to do is that, well, maybe you already have a video that you creating, you created, I'm sorry, using another app, another video app, and you want to bring it into your Flipgrid class. Can I do that? Of course you can. Flipgrid is works beautifully with app smashing so it works beautifully with other apps so if you already have a video that you want to bring into your flipper class you're more than welcome to do it you also have the option of mic only so maybe you don't feel like showing your beautiful face for this video you want to share your voice but you don't want to show your beautiful face that's totally fine you can use the version or the option of mic only you also have the option of changing, mirroring your video, changing the angle of your video, right? And this works beautifully, especially if I want my audience to read what my shirt says or what's on my walls, or I've seen it also, I've seen it how teachers use it for point of view so that they interview themselves in different point of view. I saw this in an ELA class, an ELA activity, and it was beautiful. I can also mute completely mute, mute my microphone if the activity that I'm designing, I'm probably signing my lesson and I don't want any noise, any distractions. So I can do that too. I can also record my screen. I capture my screen. So if I click here, I will be able to record my screen and maybe create a tutorial 
teaching my students how to use PowerPoint or how to use an Excel document in a formula in an Excel document that I want to show to my students. I also have the device settings and this is if you have an external webcam or an external microphone connected to your computer, this is where you can change those settings. So that's where I can find under options. Under effects, my friends, I have filters. I have text. I have pen, I have the pen so I can write on the screen. I have these boards or cuadernitos, I call them notebooks, really cute that you can use on the screen. Something that I learned from my students is that also, if you don't wanna show your beautiful face on the screen, look right here where it says split screen, you can move this all the way to the left and the notebook will be the one that is going to be on the screen and you can write on it you can add text to it you can also use the filters you can use whatever you want it is your video it is all about being creative and creating these videos to share our voices stickers you can add as many stickers as you want to these gifs or gifs whatever you call them you can also bring them into the game. You can also bring a photo into your video. Maybe you're talking about comparing and contrasting two objects, or you're talking about the periodic table and you wanna bring the periodic table into your video and you wanna be pointing to the metals and the non-metals or whatever you are teaching in your classroom. We also have, as part of effects, we have these frames that you can also use as part of your videos. What you see right here is what our students see as well. So everything I'm showing you from the Flipgrid camera, we as teachers have access to it and our students have access to it as well. So you can add the frames, you can be as creative as you want to in order for you to share your message and share your voice. The newest thing that we have in the Flipgrid camera is right here on backdrops. And just like the word says, you can select any of these backdrops. It will be covering your backdrop, right? Lo que está detrás de ti, tu pared. And uh, let me see, let me try to uh, use this one. And students are also able to use all of these. So it's not only, remember, it's not only for us as teachers, but it's also for our students. As part of backdrops, it also allows you to, there it is, okay, I am going to stay still and you are able to resize yourself move you around the screen you're also able to resize yourself so that you can up oh, my camera is not reading me there are you here there you go so you can move yourself to the right to the left I, i'm on the left now i'm going to move myself to the right or i can move myself over here in the middle of the screen or again here creativity has no limit right so as part of these uh, backdrops, I can blur my backdrop, I can hide my backdrop, there, there I am, and you can also, what you can do with these backdrops, you can also use, uh, you can also share your screen, just like we do on options, we can take, we can uh, screenshot our, our or we can share our screen, but I will be staying in the, in the video. So I can share with my students. I can show them how to navigate certain websites or maybe a Word document or a Google slide, or I can have a Google slide or a PowerPoint presentation as my background, and I can be telling my students what's happening in the presentation. I can also bring photos and videos as my background. So I am going to pretend that I already added backdrops and stickers and text and everything to my video, right? I'm gonna create a video welcoming my, welcoming my students for first semester. Once I'm ready to record my video, I have up to 10 minutes. I don't have to take those 10 minutes. It can be a very short video or I can create a 10 minute video. It's completely, completely up to you. So I am going to click right here, this circle, and in three, two, one, I'm gonna start sharing my voice. Hello, boys and girls. My name is Feli Garcia Lopez, and I'm gonna be your ESL teacher for semester one. Let me show you what we're gonna talk about in class. I can pause. I can bring a picture maybe of the outline of the activities that I am going to go over semester one with my kids and I can continue recording myself.
Once I'm ready to finish my video, I'm gonna click on next. I'm gonna start sharing my post. And Flipgrid is gonna take me now to this page where it's telling me, okay, if, if, let me play it again, okay. Listen. I'm gonna start sharing my post. Hello. So if I want to cut my video or edit my video at the beginning so my students don't listen to, I'm gonna start sharing my voice, all I gotta do is click on it and then I am going to cut it. Let's see. Let me... Okay, let me play it. Hello boys and girls, my name is Felipe. There you go. So that looks better, right? So I am going to confirm. So I can go back to the same Hello, editing. Boys and girls, my name is Felipe. There we go. Now it's the message is perfect, right? I was able to cut the beginning when I was not talking to my students. Something new that we can also add to our videos right here is the music. So if you click right here on add music, we have all this music available for you and your students. All and, and it automatically adapts to the time of the video that you just recorded. All you gotta do is just uh, listen to the music, select your favorite one, click on the plus. Hello, boys and girls, my name is- And the music will be automatically added to your video, right? So I'm ready, Feli, I'm ready to send this video to my students. What do I do next? I click on next. And then it is asking me to select a cover page for my video. I can click right here, select a frame for the video. I can take a selfie. I can upload a photo that I already have my computer or my phone, because this is, you can also do this from your phone or I can add my name, right? Because of time I'm adding the name to this video. And then once I am ready, I'm gonna click on confirm. I can add a caption. Let's call it welcome a video for whoops for 2022 2023. Then I'm gonna save to my profile. I'm gonna save it and I am going to stay here until I see that a hundred percent and that celebration that my video is ready to share. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna click right here on create link. And look at all the ways that I can share this video with my community. I can copy the link. I can come over here to the chat. I am about to paste it right here on our chat. And if you click on the link that I just shared with you on the chat, you will be able to watch the video that I just recorded for my students. I can also click right here on this QR code and look at what happens, my friends. Look at what happens. Flipgrid automatically creates this Flipgrid AR code. It's not QR, it's AR for augmented reality. So that if my students or my audience have, they have downloaded the Flipgrid app on their phones, they will be able to scan this AR code using their phones and the video is going to pop out of the screen. It's super, super nice. And students love this and the community as well. So imagine working on a letter for your parents, right? Or an email to your parents in a video, a Flipgrid video, introducing yourself to your, uh, to your students' parents and adding a Flipgrid AR code as part of it. It is totally amazing. Now you see, let me see, um, I'm showing you my phone on the screen so that you can see it in action. I'm gonna go to the Flipgrid app right here. And on the Flipgrid app, you're gonna be able to see right here next to groups, that QR code, I'm gonna tap on it so that you see that once I do that, the Flipgrid camera opens on my phone. Now I'm gonna scan that Flipgrid AR code so that you can see, Hello, there it is. Hello, my name is Feli Garcia Lopez and I'm gonna be your ESL teacher for semester one. Let me show you what we're gonna talk about in class. Hello, boys and girls. My name is Feli Garcia Lopez. So that is with the Flipgrid app. It has to be from the Flipgrid app so that you can see the video popping out of the screen so it can work as AR. 
gonna go back really quick. I'm gonna move my phone out of the way. There we go. And I have also all of these ways to share this video with my community. I can download it to my phone or my computer. I can share it on Google Classroom. I can embed it if I'm building a website for my students. I can also embed it in my website. I can share it on Microsoft Teams, of course. If you're using Remind with your students and your parents, you can also share it on Remind. And you can also share it on social media if you wish. Why is social media here? Because Flipgrid can also be used for collaborating with other teachers, collaborating with other adults. That's the reason why it is uh, the social media or the Twitter is available here. So I'm going to go back really quick. I'm going to go to profile. I'm going to click on profile so that you all can see all the videos that I've created using the Flipgrid camera. Here they are. This is the one that I just created for you. And you're going to be able to see that I use the Flipgrid camera for everything. You're going to see my son, Omar, my oldest one, who's a dancer. So I record his dances using the Flipgrid camera. My Fernando, he's a musician and he loves to cook. So when he's cooking, I record him using my Flipgrid camera. And then I share these videos with my friends, right? And this is my personal account, right? So this is an account that I created for my personal use. It's not an account that I, uh, it's the one that I use for professional de development, like the one for, like the one I have today. And, uh, let me go back. Let me activate. There it is. I'm back. And um, the one that I use with other teachers, right? The one that I used for my students, it was my school email. Instead of my personal account, my school email. Why am I sharing this with you? Because you can have a Flipgrid account exclusive for your students. Actually, you should, right? We go back to digital citizenship, right? My school email my school email can be exclusive for a Flipgrid account for my students, right? To create these classes for my students. But Feli, I also have a Gmail account, a, a, like my personal one. Can I create a Flipgrid account? Definitely, yes, you can. And all of this can happen. You can also use a Flipgrid with your family, with your friends, with other teachers on social media. So Flipgrid works both ways. It is our responsibility as teachers to know what account I'm going to be using with students and what account I'm going to be using with my personal uh, stuff. So right here, I'm going to go back right here at the very top so that you see we're going to go back to groups. Remember, on this tab, on my main page, I'm going to find my groups. Then I have access to the camera. I can create as many videos as I want to. There's no limit, and they're always going to be in my Flipgrid account under my profile. Then I have notifications. And then also here under my profile, I'm going to be able to find the discovery library and many other things, right, that I will need half a day to go into all of them. But I invite you to just push the buttons, click on it, click on it and learn. And always, if you have any questions, we're here to help you. So what I'm going to show you now really quick, so we have 12 minutes together. I'm going to go back to the main tab, the groups. And I am going to show you really quick how to create a group and how to create a topic for your students. So first of all, I'm going to create the space for my, my students, right? My group. So I'm going to click right here on group. I, as a teacher, I have two options. I can create a group, but I can also join a group. Why? Because we are teachers. We have that option. Our students, they are only going to have the option of joining a group. We can create, but we can also join. Our students, they only see the option of joining a group. So I'm gonna click right here on group. I'm gonna click on create a group. And this window opens, right? So Flipgrid is telling me, okay, Feli, you wanna create a group. How are you gonna call it, right? So we're gonna call it Flipgrid, Flipgrid class. 
You have up to 45 characters to call your group whatever you want. First period, second period, ESL class, uh, class of Espanol, math class, first period, whatever you want. You have up to 45 characters. Then Flipgrid asks you to select a theme. It automatically sets up a theme for you, that picture that your students are going to see as part of their class. You're more than welcome to leave that one, but you're like, oh, Feli, I don't like it. You can click right here on the pencil and you can select any of the pictures that we have available for you, or you can bring your own picture that you probably uh, designed on Canva or PowerPoint or Keynote or, or Google Slide or Google Drawings. You have your own picture. You can bring it into the game. I am going to leave that one because of time. And then I'm gonna move on to this space right here that is very important for us to review. So now Flipgrid is telling me, okay, Philly, you wanna invite members, right? You can invite members at any time. Just create your group and share the link, right? So I'm gonna be sharing the link, but it's also asking me who can join. I have two options right here, my friends. Option number one, anyone with the link or only people you approve. You know your students, if you already talk about digital citizenship with them, they've been using platforms like this one before, they already know how to behave online, then I will go with anyone with the link, right? Anyone I, the teacher, share this link with will be able to be in my class. Now, you're like, Philip, but what if a student that I that does not belong to my uh, classroom is, uh, is there? Can I remove that student from the class? Yes, you can. You can remove the student. You can block the student as well. Remove the student. That of the student will be out of your class. Blocking the student, the student might not uh, participate, but it's still active in your class. So you can block and unblock, okay? So, but if you click on only people you approve, that is literally, you will need to approve them. So at the very top where the bell was, like the, the notifications, you will get a notification that it is going to be asking you if you approve the specific person to be part of your class, right? Because I'm teaching teachers, I am going to leave it on anyone with the link. And if you even want to be even more secure and you want to add another layer of safety to this, you can add emails. So you can add the domains. So every school has a domain. For example, the school or the school district that I used to work for, it, the domain was at ljisd.com. So every student had an email account with that domain. So that will be, that will mean that anyone with the link that has an email address with, with this domain will be allowed to enter my classroom. Can I enter more than one domain? Yes, I can. Feli, I wanna add specific email addresses. So let me uh, show you here, I'm adding my husband's. So this one, if I add specific email addresses, that means that only the people with these email addresses will be allowed to enter my classroom. So once again, it is completely up to you. Then I, I can also bring my Google Classroom here and do the magic, right? So here we go. I have the name. I have the theme. In my case, it's going to be anyone with the link. Now I'm going to click on Create Group. and my group has been created. So I have this QR code that my students or my members can scan using their phones, can scan using the Flipgrid app. They open the app, they scan the QR code, and they're gonna be allowed to enter my class. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna copy the link, I'm gonna paste it on our chat so that you can be part of this class. And I also have all of these ways to join or to share my code with my students. Google Classroom, Embedded Code, Microsoft Teams, Remind, and Twitter. So I can also change my mind about anyone with the link. I can go from anyone with the link 
to only people I approve at any time. So I can go back and forth at any time. Remember, this is your class. You have total control of it. So once you create your classroom, here it is, Flipgrid class, the theme, and Flipgrid automatically logs in or adds a topic for you and your students that you're more than welcome to use. This topic is there for you. It is to establish relationships with your students. You're more than welcome to use it. But really quick, we have five minutes. I'm gonna show you in three minutes how we can create a topic. So once I am inside my group, my class, I'm gonna click on topic. And this window is gonna open right here. So now I'm creating the conversation, right? The questions that I'm gonna be asking my students so that they share their voices or they're shared what they learn in class with me. So I have a title. I can call it again, whatever I want. So I'm gonna be adding a topic. There it is. There we go. So I have up to 45 characters, 40, 45 characters to give it a title. So I'm gonna call it All About Me. Okay, that's the title of my uh, topic. Then right here in this window, I have up to a thousand characters that I can use so that I can ask as many questions or give as specific details and instructions for my students to start the conversation or to create their video. I have a, let's see, I already typed it because I know I was gonna be a short time. Here we go. So what I did right now, I already had my topic typed in a Word document. So what I'm doing is copying and pasting. And the reason why I'm doing this is because we're, we're short in time, right? So what is the activity that I'm asking my students to do? I want, I want them to have fun using the effects to create an all about me post. What are they gonna talk about? They're gonna choose a filter to change the tone use text to share their names, an adjective that describe them, use the pen to draw something, use the board to create a specific split uh, screen, animate your response with a GIF or GIF, upload a photo, be creative. The most important thing that I wanna know right here is that I wanna learn how to pronounce your name correctly. So you have 60 seconds right here, 60 seconds to share the pronunciation of your name and what makes you, you. This is the topic that I have for my students. So those are the questions, remember, up to a thousand characters. Then I go into topic media. This topic media is gonna be that extra scaffolding that we are going to add to the topics so the students understand or activate background knowledge to understand what's going on. And they have more material, right? More and more things in the repertoire to, to share their voices. I can bring a picture. I can record a video of myself explaining what I'm asking. I can bring a big emoji, a GIF, a sticker. I can upload a video that I already have in my phone or in my computer. I can bring a YouTube video if I want to or a Vimeo and I can add other integrations such as Adobe Spark and Bansi. I am going to add just a sticker, rapidito, uh, un corazoncito bonito, there it is. I'm gonna add that sticker. And remember, I'm asking my students for 60 seconds. So I'm gonna click right here and I'm gonna go to one minute. I decide the time that my students are going to record themselves. I have the option of 15 seconds all the way to 10 minutes. And once again, you're the creator right here. You decide for how long your students are going to record themselves. Now, something that I wanna show you really quick, under settings, I'm gonna click right here under settings, we have the option to moderate our videos. What does that mean? That moderation is automatically off. 
if I turn this, this moderation on, that means that the responses are going to be private. There, I am the only audience that my students are going to have. So those videos are going to go to me and only me. And once I approve them, then the rest of the, the person or the participants that I shared this group with will be able to see these videos. Once again, I personally, at the beginning of the school year, my moderation is always on. So when I'm teaching, my students about digital citizenship, this is part of it. And there are certain questions that might be moderated the entire year. It is completely up to you and how your students feel. But this is a very important detail that's under settings, por favor. I'm gonna go back to details and my topic is ready. I have a title, I have the questions, I have that background knowledge activated, I decided for how long my students are going to record themselves. And also I decided for this topic to be moderated for my student. So I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna click right here on post. And the topic is ready. I'm gonna go back to my Flipgrid class. And I am going to click right here on member view so that you see what your students are going to see. This is how my students are going to see the class. And this is the topic that my students are going to see. They click right here on the topic, the all about me. They read the instructions. And when they're ready to participate, they click on add response. Let me show you really quick. Here it is. When they click on add response, the Flipgrid camera is activated and you're gonna be able to see the same tools available, just the, the Flipgrid camera that I just showed you. So when the students are ready to share their voices, they record themselves and you will be able to receive their videos right here on your class, the class or the, the Flipgrid group that we just created. And I know that we are at time. So if you have any questions, please, please, you're more than welcome to open your mics or send me any questions on the chat, por favorcito. Well, I just want to thank you so much for your energy. <laughs> yeah, someone else in the chat. Um, we love Flipgrid also it gives everybody a voice. So thanks for that energy. Thank you. And right here, this is the, uh, the group that I shared in my previous presentations with, uh, we talk about Flipgrid and Telpas and the language domains. So I'm going to show you really quick how the responses are going to look like this one, all about me, which is the topic that I just showed you. So once your students uh, uh, send you their videos, you're gonna be able to see them right here and you're gonna see how they are hidden, right? Because this topic is moderated. So when you are ready to show this video to the rest of the class, then you click right here, you make it active. And that means that the rest of your students will be able to watch this video as well and maybe provide feedback among each other. And that's how the collaboration happens. So once again, my name is Feli Garcia Lopez. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for everything that you do in the classroom every single day for every single one of our students. Un honor y un placer haber estado con ustedes. Thank you very much.